Uh, Mr. President, I move to instruct conferees on SCON Res 11, the concurrent resolution on the budget for fiscal year 2016, to include in the conference report the provision in the concurrent resolution as passed by the Senate establishing a deficit neutral reserve fund related to strengthening the United States Postal Service by establishing a moratorium to protect mail processing plants, reinstate overnight delivery standards, and protect rural services. Uh, Mr. President, during the um, uh, so-called voterama here, that um, amendment passed by voice vote. And this time, I hope we can get a strong vote on it, a roll call vote on it, because it is terribly important that we tell the Postmaster General of the United States that the United States Senate wants a strong and vibrant U.S. Postal Service. Uh, Mr. President, uh, what we are saying to the Postmaster General of the United States is pretty simple, and that is do not destroy up to 15,000 middle-class jobs. Do not shut down up to 82 mail processing plants. Stop slowing down mail service delivery in this country. Speed it up by reinstating strong overnight delivery standards for first-class mail. Uh, Mr. President, I uh, do not know about Arizona and I don't know about Wyoming, but I can tell you that in Vermont uh, we have gotten increased uh, a significant number of complaints from people who are upset uh, by the slowdown in mail delivery standards. Uh, and it, it is, to my mind, just unacceptable. Uh, and uh, what we are saying now, and we'll have to say in the months to come, is you can't shut down another 82 processing plants. Uh, you cannot continue these inadequate delivery, uh, mail delivery standards, and that's got to change. The American people, the business community, uh, is entitled to know that when they put a letter or document in the mail, it is going to get delivered in a prompt way, and that, sadly, today is not the case. Uh, Mr. President, for over 230 years and enshrined in our Constitution, the Postal Service has played an enormously important role for the people of our country and for our economy. And that mission today remains as important as it has ever been. The beauty of the Postal Service is that it provides universal service, universal six days a week to every corner of our country, no matter how small or how remote. That means it will deliver mail on Wall Street, it will deliver mail uh, to a home at the end of a back road in the state of Vermont. The U.S. Postal Service supports, through its efforts, millions of jobs in virtually every sector of our economy. It provides decent paying union jobs to some 500,000 Americans and, by the way, uh, is the largest employer of veterans in this country. Whether you are an elderly woman living uh, on a dirt road in a rural area or you're a wealthy CEO executive on Park Avenue, uh, you get your mail delivered six days a week, uh, and the American people pay for this service, a cost which is far less than any place else in the industrialized world. In other words, we got a pretty good bargain. Uh, when we put a stamp on an envelope. Unfortunately, despite the success and the popularity of the Postal Service, it is under constant attack and has been under constant attack for years, including by those from those who would like to privatize the Postal Service and ultimately destroy it. Let's be clear. Uh, the same people who are attacking the Postal Service are often the same people who are attacking Social Security, Medicare, and so forth. And they essentially want to move to the privatization of virtually every major public institution in this country. Today, the U.S. Postal Service is in the process of shutting down up to 82 mail processing plants and eliminating up to 15,000 decent paying jobs. This is in addition to the 141 mail processing facilities they were closed between 2012 and 2013. In January, the Postal Service ended overnight delivery for first-class mail. Didn't get a whole lot of attention, but it happened. The purpose of this motion is to put the Senate on record 
in strong opposition to these plant closings and to demand that the Postal Service reinstate strong overnight delivery standards and not destroy good-paying jobs. Mr. President, we have been told that all of these horrendous cuts are necessary because the Postal Service is experiencing just terrible financial problems. They are losing money every single year. Well, the truth is somewhat different. The major reason that the Postal Service is in tough financial shape today is not because of email or the internet. The major reason why the Postal Service is hurting financially is because of a mandate signed into law by President Bush in December of 2006 during a lame duck session of Congress that forces the Postal Service to pre-fund 75 years of future retiree health benefits over a 10-year period. No other government agency or business in America is burdened with a mandate anywhere close to what the Postal Service has to expend, which is $5.5 billion a year. So the main point you see articles telling you the, so the Postal Service is having financial problems. The main reason, the overwhelming reason, is this uh, necessity to pre-fund 75 years of future retiree health benefits over a 10-year period at about $5.5 billion a year. In fact, all ALL, all of the so-called financial losses posted by the Postal Service since October 2012 are due to this pre-funding mandate. That's it. Without that mandate, they would be making a modest amount of money. Mr. President, we don't hear much about it, but I think that it is very important for the American people to understand the reality of the finances of the Postal Service. Excluding the pre-funding mandate, the Postal Service has actually made a $1.8 billion profit. So it is a modestly profitable operation excluding the $5.5 billion pre-funding mandate. Mr. President, revenue at the Postal Service has been increasing in recent years. At a time when Postal Service revenue is going up, it makes no sense to eliminate thousands of jobs and slow down the mail service that millions of Americans rely on. Uh, we should be working to strengthen the Postal Service uh, and not to send it into a death spiral. Before this pre-founding mandate was signed into law, the Postal Service was also profitable. In fact, from 2003 to 2006, the Postal Service made a combined profit of more than $5 billion. Uh, Mr. President, um, there is, I think, a broad bipartisan support, especially from senators who come from rural areas, who understand just how important the Postal Service is to the people of our states. So once again, uh, Mr. President, uh, when offered as an amendment at the Voterama, uh, this was passed uh, by unanimous, by voice vote. Uh, we're going to ask for a roll call vote now, but I would hope, when, when the voting takes place, but I would hope uh, that we can win this vote with a very, very strong vote and send a message to the Postal Service that once again we want our Postal Service to be uh, providing the quality service, uh, mail service that the American people deserve. Uh, thank you, Mr. President.